Hey everybody, my name's Nate. I'm part of the team here at Connect, and we are about to kick off a brand new sermon series that's called Unleash. It's gonna be all about the book of Acts. It's one that I'm really excited for. So I grabbed Chris and we're gonna talk through a preview about what to expect and what we're gonna be learning throughout the series. And my hope for this conversation is two things. One, if you're not yet a part of a community group, which is a group of friends, a part of the Connect community that meets once a week to talk about scripture, to grow in our faith together, we would so love for you to be a part of that conversation. So here's a little, I guess, call it a preview or an experience of what that conversation is like as you learn in community with others. And two, if you're already in a community group, um, I hope you can feel some of the excitement. This is like, I may be nerding out in this conversation a little bit because Acts is probably one of my favorite books throughout the whole Bible. So we're gonna have um, about 12-ish weeks, a number of weeks to go through it. But Chris, we get to jump into a little bit of that today. Um, so I know you are just as excited about this series because you've been saying that and you've been planning for this for a while. So let's start off with just the big idea. Um, so when you think about what we're gonna be learning in Unleashed, what's it all about? Yeah, I have been excited for this series for a while now, probably at least a year, if not longer. Yeah. And glad that God finally said, okay, now's the time, do it. Because Acts is the story of a movement. It's the story of the birth of the church and how the good news of Jesus then spreads all around the, you know, Mesopotamia and Middle East and, and beyond. And it's really rather incredible. So we're going to look at it because we're still early on in our journey as a church, but we're part of a movement that has been going on for thousands of years. So when it comes to what's the big idea, what's this about? I think of Acts 1.8 where Jesus is talking with his followers and he says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's what we see come about throughout the book of Acts and we get to be a part of today. Hmm. So that's the very first time where the church receives as a collective group, the Holy Spirit, but each of us as individuals, you know, we're now empowered by the Holy Spirit. So there's, like you said, this movement that begins within the early church and then spreads. So talk to us a little bit about the progression. So Acts is very historical in nature. So we go from that kind of chapter one, verse eight on, what are some of the next big milestones in the progression or the movement of the early church? Yeah, that's a great question. So we see Jesus give the mission to the church right out of the gate. I read one verse out of that. And uh, from there, he actually tells his followers to wait for the Holy Spirit that you just referenced. And in chapter two, the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples and Peter preaches a message to 3,000, over 3,000 people because 3,000 respond, they repent of their sins, they get baptized, and now the family is growing. Mm -hmm. And they start to gather in homes, they continue to gather in public spaces, celebrating Jesus, sharing life together. Mm -hmm. And then for the first several chapters, they really keep the message in Jerusalem. Okay. They're just living it in Jerusalem, in the city that they're located. And then something happens, a crisis occurs. Well, some religious aren't excited about this new Jesus guy and all of his followers. So one of them and, and many, there's persecution that breaks out. And this guy Saul stands and he watches as Stephen, a follower of Jesus, gets martyred for his faith, the first mm -hmm. Christian martyr. And from that moment, God takes what was terrible and he brings good out of it. And I love that about God because I hope that's what he does for us when I think back over this past year. Mm -hmm. We've been in this crisis and what God did in, in Acts and in the first century is he used that opportunity to then have the gospel spread to a new, new you know, region. It yeah. was Judea and Samaria then. And I hope that because of what we've been through, the gospel will go even further than it's ever gone before. And then further on in the book of Acts, you see the gospel then go to the ends of the earth. In fact, it wraps up with Paul in Rome, which was his dream, and the gospel continues to go forth. So a couple things that are interesting about that. So one, the movement is sparked or started by the Holy Spirit. 
crisis accelerates it. Mm. It starts with a very small group, then 3,000, a city, and then it kind of ripples out from there. So there's a movement, but what I want to kind of drill down into for a little bit, I, you're talking about a movement that starts within a couple key characters. Mm. Like you mentioned, Saul being one of them, Stephen. So who are some of the, the characters in the early church, this journey where there's a movement that's beginning in them, and they're a part of the story of the church. So who are the, some of the people that we'll be learning about throughout the series? Yeah, great question. So if you, at the highest level, you've kind of got two main human characters in the book of Acts. The, the thread throughout is the Holy Spirit, 100%. Some Bible translations will even say the Acts of the Apostles, but I think there's been pretty healthy debate that it actually could be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit working through God's people. But Peter really is the hero, it seems, in the first part of the book of Acts. Like, he's, get, he's in all the action, he seems to be in all the scenes. And then Saul, that guy who was standing watching Stephen get martyred, he had this radical encounter with Jesus, and he ends up becoming the greatest missionary the world's ever known, writing much of our New Testament. And the second half of Acts really follows Saul, soon to be known as Paul's life. So those are a couple of the major ones. Then there are some other smaller players, Stevens, Juan, John, and others. So there are some consistent themes throughout all of these characters kind of grow through their own movement. Um, disciple making you've touched on previously is like one of the big things that comes out of Acts because the church itself, it, it's essentially a movement of the people. It's not buildings and structures and programs that is the early church. It's these characters, it's the people. So disciple making is critical. What are some of the, the points that Acts communicates as a model or an example for how to make disciples and how the church then grows? What do we learn about disciple making as a theme through Unleashed? Yeah, love it, because that's what Acts is about. And it, that's what it documents, the, yeah. the story of how these first followers of Jesus who literally followed him around, like they were in the, his dust as he walked down the road, well, Jesus ascends to heaven where he currently is, mm -hmm. and then they're like figuring out what does it look like to take this message and invite others to follow too. And that's really what the book of Acts is about. A couple of things that we see, uh, disciple making impacts how someone in, engages with somebody who is a stranger to faith, that they're not part of a, a faith walk and the way someone would engage with them and invite them to experience more in a relationship with God even up to people who they have a relationship with God, they're part of the church family, yeah. and they're being invited into a greater level of ownership and investment by serving in the church. Think of Acts chapter 6, where the apostles, there's so much ministry happening that they can't get to everything. And they're starting to drop some balls, and they realize that can't happen. So they empower a group of others, Stephen being one of those guys, yeah. to continue to carry on the mission. So it's that wherever someone's at in their faith journey, they're invited to take a next step. That's discipleship. That's very relatable too, I think, to all, I guess, parts of life. Mm -hmm. Not only in the church, like my background is coming from small business and building companies, balls get dropped. Mm -hmm. And it's usually because I haven't done my job giving opportunity mm -hmm. and training to somebody else to step up and be a leader. So I, I love that Acts is a model both for us, the stage that Connect is in its journey, all of its uh, members and staff, but also as we go out and we think about other areas of life where we can build a movement for Christ, I think there's a lot of parallels, which is pretty cool. Um, now, I'm sure so much of this you love, but is there any one, call it verse, moment that really sticks out to you as one of your favorites throughout the entire book of Acts? Yeah, it's a, there's so many really stories, accounts, verses that that hit home but one that really hits home is when the gospel was in Jerusalem, they're sharing it, and then, like I said, persecution happened, it spreads. Well, what we see in Acts chapter 8 is the disciples' eyes opened to this reality that while Jesus is for me, he's not for only me. He's actually for everyone. And because he's for everyone, we need to be about everyone, every individual. And that's when... Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch, and it's just this beautiful example that Jesus is truly for everyone, even the person you don't think he's for. 
Yeah, so it's it's the story of the church, the collective group, but you get to the collective by the worth and the value in investing in growing each individual member of the church. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Well, I think that that's our hope for the series is as a, as a group and as a church, we're talking about and modeling the growth of Connect after the early church. But then even in um, small group discussions, each one of us are feeling how the Lord wants to move in us to create us, um, to make us not only into a leader, but a disciple who then goes and makes disciples. So um, thank you, Chris. This has been a lot of fun. I hope uh, everybody there who is already in a community group, maybe you're watching this with your community group, that you get excited to have some really rich conversation throughout Unleashed. And if you're not yet in a community group, uh, but you're interested in just, hey, coming for one night, seeing what it's all about, there are community groups that meet on different nights of the week um, with food, gathering, and you can find a community group that works best for your schedule. If you just go to connectchurch.community and go to the groups page, uh, you can find a group of friends who are really excited to see you and talk through Unleashed with you. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.